Hey, I'm Simon Saunders from the, the um, UK's Independent Communications Regulator, Ofcom, uh, where I'm Director of Emerging and Online Technology, covering the, the whole range of the, the sectors that we regulate. And as it says here, making communications work for everyone. So I'm delighted that our friends at UK 5G have mastered the technology to make this work, so, so I don't get the blame. Um, Seriously, this, this subject of uh, network diversification, particularly on the supply side of things, is, is really important to us in our duties and in support of making sure that, that UK networks function well for everybody that, that uses them. Um, our sort of interest in that, that market includes, but isn't limited to the really important security aspects excuse me, th those aspects have definitely, you know, raised the temperature and the, the immediacy of these issues. Um, and we take full account of those in the work that we do. But, but having a, a healthy supply market is important for other reasons as well. It's important for, for innovation. And we've got operators really wanting to transform the architectures of their networks towards greater use of software, towards moving pieces of computing and and storage closer to the, the users at the edge, moving things that used to be on the mobile sites nearer to the center um, towards using a wider range of sort of uh, topologies for those networks. So not just big cells, but small cells, indoors and outdoors and private networks. So there's a greater range of, of demands uh, on those networks and the opportunity that you know, having a greater range of suppliers who don't necessarily deliver the entire end-to-end -end system might be able to deliver kind of innovative best of breed solutions for particular subsystems. And all of those, those benefits can, can come along if you've got a, a good diverse open market. Likewise, I think, I think that, that open market encourages the possibility of, of creating ever greater resilience, both in terms of making sure the supply chain isn't, isn't limited by by, by any particular uh, availability of components and, and capabilities, but also in, in terms of making sure what a very critical networks are, you know, are on all the time and, and performing well. And, and more broadly, of course, it helps with the, the commercial health of the sector so that the operators and others can keep investing in extending and improving the performance and the consistency of the services they deliver to customers. Um, now, how do we do all that? How do we help with that? Well, well Ofcom you know, regulates for the benefit of the users of these networks, but we do it through regulating the operators rather than the vendors, for example. But, but despite that, we, we have a, an active um, and uh, you know, hopefully effective program under our own initiative. We, we have a formal role in advising uh, government and our colleagues at, at DCMS on sort of technical matters that relate to this. Um, but we also, under our own auspices, work in a number of areas in currently you know, analyzing the sufficiency of the, the standards, the emerging standards, to ensure that, that networks can be truly open and interoperable and that way minimize the barriers to bringing on new suppliers and for existing suppliers likewise to, you know, to, to make inroads into other networks. Um, it's it's nice sort of looking at some some halcyon future where where everything is very diverse and open, but you have to get there from here. So we're also mapping out the scenarios for operators to migrate from their current networks to those more diverse uh, and capable networks of the future, and thinking about what barriers there might be there and what we can do to to help to minimise those barriers. Um, we're working to understand vendors readiness to comply with these standards and to fit in with the requirements that UK operators have in their networks and encouraging there to be enough of those and for those, those requirements to be you know, clearly articulated. We're also thinking about what policy levers we might have that could encourage progress uh, towards those goals. Um, and, and in doing that, we're, we're also speaking a lot with international counterparts and industry groups to really understand their ideas, what we could do to, to, to make a better impact on this. 
so so plenty is already going on but but one of the things we wanted to do is is not just do this in the abstract in our role in advising government and i sit on the diversification task force to provide uh, uh, input to that on a on a hopefully expert advisory basis we want to do that with high quality and it's better for us to do that warts and all hands on with the technology um, so we we saw one particular opportunity to, to create at speed a, a test bed and a facility for vendors to come and test and hopefully prove interoperability and for us to understand where the, the standards and the, the ways of, of testing that interoperability could do with some improvement. Um, and so that's not only for our own understanding, it's also to send a signal that if you like the UK is kind of open to business and that there are opportunities for those, those vendors. Uh, given that we wanted to do it quickly, we wanted to work with an existing capability in terms of the, the physical nature of sites and backhaul and capability uh, to bring that forward and, and partnering with the digital catapult then seemed like a very natural approach. Um, so I'm going to hand over to, to Joe to talk a bit more about something we've come to know as, as SONIC and, and Joe can spell out what the acronym really means but from my point of view you know sonic conveys that we want it to be fast and we're going to make a lot of noise about it over to you jeff thanks very much simon uh, i will just share my screen there we go hopefully everybody can see see that shout if shout if you can't so um yeah, thank you, Simon. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, and uh, thank you for being here today. It's great to see so many participants uh, and to hear from the Minister and Scott on the progress and vision around diversification already. Um, our mission at the Digital Catapult is to accelerate the adoption of uh, enabling digital technologies into UK industry uh, to address barriers and ultimately to work to increase productivity in the UK. So um, the promise of 5G and its exploitation by enterprises and industry and more broadly, you know, the potential of future digital networks in the UK is at the very heart of, of our work and, and our interest. Um, networks and connectivity have never really been more important in our lives, as we all know on, on this call, both as consumers, but increasingly to our ind industries and supply chains. And uh, at the same time, we see a huge change of pace occurring in the landscape of telecommunications and the service, the service offerings. Uh, as Simon sort of alluded to, softwareization, virtualization, open architectures operating on you know, increasingly general purpose compute and cloud infrastructure is shifting pace. And this generates the promise of significant increase in competition, uh, and innovation in the space, transforming both the technology and the business landscape. So the pace of development and innovation and new offerings in this space over the coming decade, we're already seeing is actually starting to move very, very quickly. And that's why with our mission at the Catapult, we're working in this space, looking at accelerating innovation with new vendors as the space increasingly moves at the pace of the software world. Um, and at the same time, of course, uh, governments uh, are determined to have resilient and secure digital infrastructure underpinning businesses and commerce and national infrastructure. And technologies like Open RAN present the opportunity of enabling a broadened and more disaggregated supply chain to occur more rapidly than we've seen through typical generation changes like 3G to 4G that we're all familiar with here. Uh, and, and this presents an opportunity for the UK and for entrance to the disaggregated supply chain. So it was very clear to us that we've got a, a role to play here uh, and a strong alignment, as, uh, as Simon says, between our, uh, you know, our role as a neutral technology organisation, uh, enabling innovation and productivity and the strategic interests of, of Ofcom and the government in this space. Uh, the catapult was built over the over the years. Uh, uh, sorry, I'll just uh, switch slides. The catapult has built over the years uh, a fantastic capability around 5G, 
and open networking uh, with its expertise and test beds, uh, which which I can say with with a without a sort of complete lack of modesty is I've only been there for six months, so I can't really take any real credit myself. Uh, but it gives us, as Simon says, a real head start in this space in terms of building upon existing infrastructure and enabling us to make uh, rapid progress. So Sonic will be uh, a national uh, capability uh, on open and software centric telecoms networks in the UK, starting with disaggregated open RAM. Uh, it will couple lab testing, interoperability and integration capabilities with real world indoor and outdoor deployments, enabling end to end system performance understanding in a real world environment with uh, rotating vendors as they become ready. Uh, a focus of the center is going to be on earlier stage commercial and pre commercial offerings a slightly earlier technology readiness level, enabling demonstration and interoperability testing in real world usage situations with both mature reference network chains and the ability to switch in different uh, components, possibly at different, different TRL levels. We wanna make immediate progress on solutions that are going to play a part in the near to medium term. So we'll utilize the platform to accelerate the development and adoption of open RAN technologies, fostering a disaggregated supply chain in the UK with multiple suppliers for each element in the technology stack. Uh, we want to maintain a comprehensive understanding of technology readiness, maturity challenges and potential solutions to inform the ecosystem, including operators, regulator, and industry in the UK. And we want to complement and cooperate with the existing bodies making progress in this space and inputting to standards. So in the immediate term, looking towards May next year, we're already working with a number of vendors and are keen to work with more as we, we, as we build out and demonstrate. And if we've not already spoken with you, please do get in touch. Uh, building upon our existing 5G testbed infrastructure in London and Brighton, we're currently focusing on building three or so representative end-to-end -end chains with Open RAN uh, and have them up and working by May. And uh, we will have interchange between them at the different points in the CU, DU, RU and RIC. Um, we're already working with eight or nine vendors on achieving this. Uh, and in parallel, we'll be developing the operating methodology for operating in an open environment with a centre like this, with larger and smaller companies at earlier and later TRL stages. So we're looking to make rapid progress. Uh, we'll be making more announcements early next year about our plans and progress. We expect to hold a dedicated event relatively early in the new year to discuss, in, to discuss this in more detail. Um, we will have nodes in uh, the digital catapults, uh, the digital catapult itself, which is opposite, opposite the British Library in King's Cross in London, and a node uh, at Ofcom uh, in their offices by the Thames, and also in the Brighton Dome, which is Brighton's principal concert venue and offers a relatively large capacity in terms of people and connected devices. So uh, we're very happy to be working together with Ofcom in partnership with Ofcom and uh, with DCMS. As a neutral technology organisation, um, we maintain and facilitate, hopefully, an up-to-date technology picture in this space, facilitate the ecosystem and address some of the potential challenges we, we were expecting we, we might see in this space. This is a significant activity where we want to build a long-standing national capability in the space of R&D and innovation to address the diversification challenges and contribute to a balanced ecosystem and stimulate uh, innovation in the UK. And making sure we can accelerate adoption in the wide range of potential deployment scenarios we think we'll, we'll foresee in the coming decade. So as well as national networks from private networks and neutral hosts, 
and to accelerate adoption pathways into industry exploitation. So uh, that's probably more than my five minutes, in fact, I suspect. Uh, thank you, everybody, and uh, look forward to discussing this uh, further with you.